the June Aught 7 exam. We're now on page 7, the beginning of part B. Question 36. What's the approximate length of a baseball bat? Two questions. Can you estimate a baseball bat? And can you read scientific notation? Let's start here. 10 to the second would be 100. 10 to the first would be 10. 10 to the negative one would be a tenth of a meter. And 10 to the 0 would be 1 meter. Baseball bat, approximately 1 meter. Question 37. A force of 1 newton is equivalent to? Well, the thing to do would be to write the equation for force. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. Mass would be kilograms. Acceleration would be meters per second squared. So kilogram meters per second squared. That looks like the right one. Kilogram meter seconds, that would be momentum. Kilogram meter squared per second squared, that would be work. Kilogram squared per meter squared per second squared, somebody just got carried away. Questions 38 and 39 depend on the information here. A stream is 30 meters wide, and its current flows southward at 1.5 meters per second. So here would be the river, about 30 meters wide. And the current is flowing southwards at 1.5 meters per second. A toy boat is launched with a velocity of 2 meters per second eastward. So the boat is heading that way at 2 meters per second. And from the west bank, so it's got to cross the river. So now two things are going to happen when this boat enters the water. It's going to be heading eastwards at 2 meters per second. As soon as it hits the water, it's also going to be going south at about 1.5 meters per second. So the real path of this boat is going to be at an angle. It's something greater than 2, but less than 3.5. We can use the uh, tr uh, trig function, or Pythagorean, to find out what that value is if we need it. Question 38. What is the magnitude of the boat's resultant velocity as it crosses the stream? Well, it's going to be more than half a meter per second. It is going to be less than three and a half meters per second because it would be going that if it was going downstream at two plus the one and a half because of the current. So it's 2.5 or 3.0. So it looks like it's time for a little bit of math. 2, one leg of the triangle, to draw it upwards just so it fits, 1.5, and we want the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. We get our calculator out. 2 squared is 4, or well, 1.5 squared is more than that. The square root of it is going to be 2.5. Question 39. How much time is required for the boat to reach the opposite bank of the stream? Well, it's got to go a distance of 30 meters. And in fact, it will only be traveling in that direction at a velocity of 2 meters per second. So if velocity equals distance over time, time must be equal to distance divided by velocity. 30 meters divided by 2 meters per second gives us about 15 seconds of time. Question 40. An observer recorded the following data for the motion of a car undergoing constant acceleration. Well, at the beginning, it was traveling at 4. Two seconds later, so change in time is 2 seconds, it's changed its velocity from 4 to 7, or 3, meters per second. And then from 5 to 6, that's an additional 1 second. And from 7 to 8.5, it's 1.5 meters per second. Well, acceleration is change in velocity divided by time. If we use this change in velocity of 2 divided by 3, it gives us 1.5 meter per second per second. And we come back here and we go 1 second, that's convenient, 1.5 meters per second. That also gives us 1.5 meters per second. What was the magnitude of the acceleration of the car? 
I'm going to go with 1.5 meter per second squared. Question 41. Which graph best represents the relationship between the velocity of an object thrown straight upward? It's kind of important there. From the Earth's surface and the time that elapsed while it's in the air. So velocity is a function of time. Well, acceleration is a change in velocity is a function of time. And on the Earth, the acceleration is always going to be 9.8 meters per second squared at the surface of the Earth where we're throwing the ball. So we're looking for, on a velocity time graph, it's going to be a straight line. Well, graph 1 represents an object that traveled at a constant velocity for the whole trip. Now, that wouldn't be very fun if you threw a ball up and it just kept going at the same speed. Graph 2 shows an object that's actually increasing in velocity. It's changing its velocity. So uh, the rate of acceleration is even greater. So graph... Well, that was graph 3. Sorry, this is graph 2. The velocity is decreasing until it reaches 0. But it's a curve again. So not a constant rate of acceleration. And graph 4... Let's put a pretend number. Let's say this is uh, 10 meters per second. It slows down till it gets to the top of its path and, s and stops. And then it starts becoming negative velocity. Well, remember, velocity is a vector, and positive and negative velocity indicate direction. So it's going upwards, but slowing down. It reaches zero, and then it starts to fall at a constant rate until it finally gets to your hand. So uh, choice four is the proper graph for this event.